Hi, I'm Kevin. And I'm Amanda. And we are serving up all that jam. All that jam, quick hit. Ryan Jalbert on the differences between Motet and Jalbatross. Do you, do you approach your songwriting and your collaboration in the studio with the motet differently than you do with Jalbatross? Yeah, I think so because, um, well, for one, with Jalbatross, it's guitar music primarily. You know, I'm writing that music so that I, um, it's meant to be pretty agile so I could like switch members in and out. It's like easy arrangements that I lead that I can, I have charts for everything and I can just book a gig and call some guys and we can just stretch, you know, and I lead the music and it's all just kind of all on me. And in the motet, you know, we really like to just, you know, incorporate all the pieces in a different way. We like to, it's a little bit more, collaborative just because we've been working together so long and so we kind of know um you know some sometimes uh a thoroughly composed piece is going to be a little restricting and sometimes like a skeleton of a tune will really kind of grow legs and and that's like some of the more fun stuff to play um i guess that's sort of there is some similarities with, with Jalbatross there, but um, with the motet, we sort of have the luxury of really like giving this music some time, um, working it up, you know, collaborating a little bit more. How do you, when your motet has had more horns, you only have the one horn now, Jalbatross doesn't have a horn. How do you adapt your playing or is there any change of how you go into i got four horns on stage with me as opposed to one as opposed to none yeah well so with jalbatross it's just um it's just looser intentionally it's it's just kind of meant for stretching and so and it's also meant for space i really because i really like a lot of music with less ingredients i love full sounding music but i some of my favorite music of all time is like modesky martin wood or modesky mm-hmm. martin wood and schofield um this band the slip that i used to yeah. see same probably almost a hundred times they're like really good friends of mine i love the trio i love the quartet i just love how agile it is how can you can just from night to night, you could make, you could just have the basis start the whole song, right? For no reason other than we haven't done it, you know. So I that's the Java Tross is kind of my place to try all that stuff, you know. Um, but we don't draw the crowds that the motet does, so there's less pressure, you know. Right. Um, and with the motet, uh, yeah, so. I think I think you know leaving space is kind of the name of the game for um, for those extra horn lines, you know, because a lot of times adding extra horns means um, playing the same lines, but they're full, more full, and then sometimes it means these extra horns can cover these counterpoint lines, and then there's just another background melody that's not usually there, and so I think it's just a lot of listening and just reacting and you know just just being aware and and like i said just kind of creating space for everyone to find their pockets do you find it difficult more difficult to present an instrumental band to a crowd and to get the bodies in the door than having the vocalist yeah but i i think it's you know i depending on the gig if i think um because occasionally someone will want albatross and then i find out what the gig is and i'm and i'll kind of start the conversation at like if you can stretch the budget i think what you might want is albatross plus special guest because 
what you're describing seems like a scenario where you might want to have someone sing a few tunes tonight, you know, and if it's like, and so I'm, you know, I, I'll bring that up occasionally. Um, but I think, I think the people that like Jalbatross also like instrumental music and they like, they like adventurous, funky instrumental music, psychedelic music, um, stream of consciousness kind of, you know, vibe creation kind of stuff. And so I think they get it. Um, and if it was, if I felt like there'd be some pressure, I probably wouldn't take the gig or I would kind of recommend something else, you know, because I really don't do the gig very often. So I kind of wait and see, you know, kind of find my, my, my spots for it because it's like, it's not the gig where like, I'm not going to take it out and do bars around town. I like, I like to find nice, like cool spots to do it at where it's like Cervantes opening for somebody where there's going to be a nice crowd and I can do my thing new conscious where there's like a nice crowd and people are going to come out and there's going to be lights. There's going to be production. It's going to be a cool thing. You know, I'm happy to do some bars around town or whatever, but I'm going to just do it. And, you know, I'm not going to, cause I don't want to like overexpose Jalbatross because it's also like special to me, you know? And so I'd rather like pick our spots, get the guys to rehearse, be able to pay everyone properly where people like, put some extra work into it. We all kind of go into it, caring about it, feeling like it's a special thing. And then, so we, you know, it's, and so I kind of find the, the spots where I don't feel that pressure necessarily, you know. If you are enjoying All That Jam, please like and subscribe to our social media channels at All That Jam Pod on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or visit our website, allthatjampod.com. Make sure to sign up for our email list and tune in every week for new episodes. Also, look for full interviews on our YouTube channel. And remember, stay beautiful, but don't stay underground too long.